Hi, welcome. My name is Debonair Kovacs. I'm sharing the 40 ways my labyrinth is like my life for the days of Lent this year. We're on number 16. Sorry, 17. It contains earth, water, wind, and fire. This might be my favorite thing about my labyrinth. A few years ago, I did a long-term study of how these four elements are mentioned or developed in the Bible. It turned out to be quite fascinating. One of these days, I'll write a book about what I learned. The insight that seemed the most interesting and useful to me is that everything really is made out of these four things, even if not quite the way the ancients imagined. If you go from the bottom up, so to speak, you have the earth with all its soil and rock, with water flowing under and over it, raining down on it, and evaporating from it. Then wind or atmosphere, which carries that rain and water vapor, and above it all, the endless fire of the sun keeping everything going. So a tree, let's say a peach tree in my labyrinth, eats dirt, drinks the water it sucks up through its cambium layer to pull up the nutrients from the dirt, inhales carbon dioxide and exhales oxygen, how convenient. And in the most astonishing process of all, if only we could temporarily set aside our familiarity with this fact, turn sunshine into food. It makes its leaves, its barks, its blossoms, and ultimately peaches out of these elements. I eat the peach and voila, I too am made of earth, about a dollar's worth of minerals by latest estimates. Actually, it's probably come up with uh, inflation. Water, 70 or 80 percent, depending on whom you ask, and maybe on how much water I drank that day. Wind, not only the air I breathe and use for speaking and singing, but oxygen, hydrogen, etc. in my tissues. And fire, 98.6 degrees of it on a cool day, on a good day. I could, well, I couldn't, but someone could, go into the physics of relativity from here. I don't even know if that phrase makes physical sense and point out that all things can be turned back into pure energy, fire, so to speak, if only we knew how. Heraclitus, circa 535 to 475 BCE, said that too, by the way. Makes you wonder, doesn't it, what the ancients actually knew? There have always been those who believe these elements were the actual makers of life. Some worshipped them as gods. Some today use them as excuses to not worship any god at all. I believe these elements were created and put together in their fascinating and infinite combinations by a personal creator called in English God. A better name might be the nameless one of many names. One particularly ancient name that might be better yet is the Hebrew Tetragrammaton, transliterated YHWH, which means something like the beingness of being or isness, wasness, will beness. Those translations are borrowed from Rabbi Marsha Prager of the Jewish Renewal Movement. And she's on YouTube, too, and I highly recommend you look her up. Rabbi Marsha Prager, P-R-A-G-E-R. I met her, and she's amazing. That creator, that holy, gracious one, is in my labyrinth, too. That giving, constantly making one, going from the top down, can be seen in the purifying power of fire, inspired, literally breathed in, inspired, in the invisible motion and fullness of the wind, experienced in the cleansing, birthing, flowing nature of water, and felt in the earthly clay of our bodies made in the image of the One. That One is everywhere, all the time, with you now, with me now. Yes. See you next time.